Then we, there's no December event, and then the next one is January, where we're having uh, Tim Allen, who is a stop motion uh, specialist who's worked for Hartman and on various feature films and so on, having to do a screening of his work. Um, yes, I mentioned Talma, um, Talma Goldman Cohen. Um, thanks to the event here, um, her work's now being conserved by the uh, British Film Institute. We have a, a regular BFI curator called Jess Stewart, who sometimes comes and uh, gives talks here, so... Oh, hello, come on in, come on in. So all your people yeah. here now. Oh, right. Right, you see it's seamless, isn't it? <laughs> um, so I'm making just a point about how informal uh, we, we are. Um, okay, um, Max, um, I first heard about you when I started at the Royal College of Art and you had graduated the year before with a graduation film called Collisions, which I hope, are we seeing that tonight? Um, and I've followed your work since then. Um, I know something I'd like to, I hope you'll talk about a little bit later on, is um, your first year for RCA film um, was called Everything Turns. And stylistically, there's quite a jump from one to the <coughs> other. I hope you'll say a little bit about that later on. I wasn't planning on showing it. Uh, okay, but you can tell, maybe tell us about a little bit about it. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Max studied, uh, did his BA at Goldsmiths, uh, his masters at the Royal College of Art, and doctorate at the University of East London. Um, sadly, Max is about to depart our shores in December to teach in Hong Kong. Is that right? Um, Max is a video artist, an experimental filmmaker, and also, perhaps unusually for an animator, is working in the field of audiovisual performance. So I feel that you're sort of at the connecting point between digital fine art and performance, and which presumably also takes in concert projections and so on. Um, when I was lucky enough to go to Ottawa, uh, a few weeks ago, and Max was represented by two films there, I was delighted to see. Um, a very large increase in the size, amount, or importance <coughs> of something over a very short period of time. I might have got that slightly scrammed well, up. I can um, I never it. Well, I noticed in some of your filmographies it says a very large increase, and I, I thought, no, no, I have to do it properly, and um, stop the show. Um, I find your work very interesting because on the one hand it feels um, contemporary and aware of the current landscape in, in a digital media but there's also, I feel it's working in the tradition of cubist cinema, abstract cinema, <coughs> excuse me, uh, visual music. So I feel it's also in the vein, or in the tradition of Hans Richter, Marcel Duchamp, um, the Whitney Brothers, particularly, and also um, William Latham, perhaps more recently, uh, from the 1990s. So I feel it's a very sort of rich uh, area. Um, and also there's even an element of, I, I do feel there's a, a kind of an approachability about the work. Because on the one hand, I think it's deeply experimental and also sometimes political. But at the same time, there's a really keen sense of fun and it is a pleasurable experience to watch, which one doesn't always associate, if I'm allowed to say, with, with certain uh, examples of uh, abstract cinema. So I feel it's kind of very, very rich, and there's an awful lot in there to, to kind of unpack, an awful lot to savour uh, in many different ways. So I'll rather than blather on, I'd like you all to give... Uh, blather on, but that's really <laughs> oh, okay. <good. laughs> um, I am quite passionate about the whole synesthesia uh, visual music uh, tradition and so on, and it's very nice to see someone wor you know, working in that field, uh, but at the same time being very much sort of at the, at the cutting edge of uh, where we find ourselves now. And I've got loads and loads of questions to ask, but cool. I, better, I better hold off on them. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, will you all please give a very warm welcome to Max Hatton. Actually, that was awesome. Um, you've said it all already. Um, 
don't know, don't know what else to say, really. Done it. It was really good. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, may I ask you a question that might help? Um, well, yeah. Well, I mean, where does it all come from? Uh, I mean, I've, I've given a few facts um, mm -hmm. about you. Um, for me, I feel, I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but I feel there must have been a moment between your first year RCA film and your second year RCA film. Perhaps this is already a way that you were working and the first one wasn't symptomatic of, of, of your work subsequently. Or was there a kind of a, a road to Damascus moment when you actually realised, because this, I know I'm banging on about it, the second year film has in many ways defined your work, or at least been an antecedent for all the work you've produced since then. And was, what happened then? Um, I think, I mean, I came to animation through an interest A in music, uh, B in visual art, and C design. And D, uh, but that's only sort of recently kind of emerged kind of a spiritual kind of engagement with the audiovisual realm. Um, but the, the kind of two, two main fields were kind of vi visual expression and, and music. My dad's a musician, I grew up with music around the house uh, all the time. And um, at the same time I was always drawing and painting and I saw those as two separate disciplines that I, couldn't, I didn't see them like joined in any way. Um, and actually there's an, a, a vector E, which is digital technology, computers, which is also really important. Uh, basically what happened when I got my first computer, age 12, I started using it to make music. Um, and it allowed me to kind of discover music on my own terms, not having to compare myself with my dad and what he was doing. Um, and I didn't have to learn an instrument, I could basically just work non-linearly, uh, work with layering, sampling, um, and kind of organically growing a song. Um, did that up to a point and then it sort of came the point where I had to decide what to study and I was really confused because I didn't want to do music and by that point I like spent the last like, five years uh, between like 14 and 19 or whatever just making music so the visual side had kind of fallen by the wayside um, so then I did this BA in media studies at Goldsmiths, um, which was a bit of a catch-all trying to kind of figure myself out. And there was this animation module there that I came across, and suddenly it, well not suddenly, kind of slowly it clicked that those were very similar processes of working, of working uh, 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 non-linearly uh, along a timeline, um, using the computer as a tool to to build up a, a film. Um, so does that mean, in a way, intellectually, you were taking your musical process mm. and applying it to yeah. visuals instead? Yeah, I wasn't doing that when I was at Goldsmiths, but that was kind of... I started getting interested in using, in, in, in working with the moving image. Mm. Um, and then at the RCA, I kind of, I guess, tried that approach, kind of, put to push that approach of working with the moving image in a in a visual uh, sense. Um, sorry, in a, in a in a musical sense. And by musical, I don't necessarily mean like notation, but musical in the sense um, how I was making music. Which is about mm. kind of non-linear uh, and letting things kind of grow and develop. Mm. Taking something, taking a sample. Um, uh, in the case of the first film I want to show, um, uh, those samples are basically uh, photographs, which are then reanimated kind of painstakingly, um, not knowing where it was going, and uh, kind of yeah, letting it grow. <coughs> 
organically. Um, and maybe that's a good segue actually into, mm. into showing that film, which is also a, a, a collaboration with my dad. So it's his music and, and my images. And um, what year Shall was we? this made? Uh, that's uh, 2005. Oh, right. Excellent. So that's, uh, yeah, in my second year at the RCA. Okay, great, great. Okay, just give me a second to um, set things up. I've got the, uh, the remote over here. RCA with a kind of very open mind and not really, I was like so chuffed that I got in because I felt like I liked my way in because I couldn't, like I hadn't drawn for such a long time, I hadn't been drawing for such a long time at, by that point. Um, and I, I did see the RCA as kind of quite, you know, drawing heavy. Um, so in my first year I made, made a drawn animation film It was also based on a poem. Um, that was kind of semi-abstract, semi-figurative, um, almost, I guess, sort of trying to fit into the, well, you know, to doing my RCA film, kind mm. of trying to kind of work out uh, myself within the, that kind of, um, within the RCA. Um, And then, I guess I was exposed to quite a lot of uh, work there by uh, experimental filmmakers. Um, Do you have any particular names? Um, I think who one... Interest, who've uh, influenced you? One uh, key uh, point was seeing a Oscar fishing uh, screening at the Goethe Institute, which is just across the I was at the same the screening. More than Mark Webber's. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, in my first year, um, which really kind of blew me away. And um, yeah, so getting more interested in in that kind of work and realized that there was a that there was a history, there was a, a tradition there of of work that was interested in the moving image in an abstract sense. Um, that was using musical principles to structure, um, structure time. Um, that was, you know, there right from the beginning of cinema, basically. Mm. And I, I found that really um, kind of empowering and uh, encouraging. Um, yeah. Sorry to. No, I hope I'm not um, breaking the flow. Um, it's very interesting to see the iconography that you use um, in collisions. Um, you discuss the. Do you want to come in? Because if you see the seat. Sorry. Hi. Yeah, can people on the, on the um, sofa bits, do you want to start squishing, squishing together a bit? If you've got any bags, they'll, they'll go behind the seat. There's a little space there. Um, yeah, in, in terms of the iconography, because you described very eloquently the, your thinking behind um, the sort of structure that lies behind the film, so the actual, the actual technique of using yeah, abstract forms in this sort of beautiful kaleidoscopic array. Uh, where did that come from? Um, well, it, it, it came out of basically after having made Everything Turns um, and Nacht Machine, um, it, I felt quite strongly that I wanted to make a film that had 
was abstract, but it had maybe some more meaning. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was 2005, like two years into uh, the American British uh, invasion of Iraq, four years into 9 11, and, uh, and I thought it'd be interesting to make something that looked at that conflict, um, but with a kind of non finger pointing kind of uh, in a non finger pointing way. So maybe looking at, at the similarities between the cultures rather than the differences. Um, and so the obvious thing was to look at the flags and there's color overlaps and there's stars and both flags of of the US and um, uh, the UK but also the Arabic Islamic countries. Um, and then as I was making it I, I now I started off with Islamic patterns, but then mm -hmm. I realized that actually in American quilts there's a there's a lot of overlap as well between Islamic patterns and American quilt making, and I got really like excited when I figured that one out. So I was like, wow, it's, it's the same. Um, so the whole film is kind of based on, the, on using that kind of cultural iconography to to tell the story. Um, Yeah, should we watch it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I um, I guess what I tried uh, to do with with collision was to like push this idea of abstract storytelling where the film is completely abstract but at the same time you know, does relate uh, a narrative which admittedly you know, the sound kind of does a lot of that and, and, but, but that's fine because it's always about sound and image and how they work together and um, on this one I, I did the sound myself so I, I was able to do it kind of work very tightly between between the two and I didn't really know like where it was going so I was just making lots of uh, different elements and then putting them together both sound and image and kind of just trying to see what works and and then the kind of narrative kind of emerged from that um, which is interesting because if you look at it, you think that it was kind of <coughs> storyboarded, you know, that way. But actually, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just playing around and shuffling around until it kind of made sense, and then I'd kind of make connections between different parts and make it make it seamless. And how? What technology were you using to create it? Um, it was I mean, After Effects, and half the film is done using a plugin called Kaleidoscope, which uh, uh, was very handy. And um, yeah, I'm all for using plugins. Yeah. I've just from my limited uh -huh. experience of After Effects, I've never seen knowingly a film created in After Effects that looks like that. The sort of yeah, but you've seen like no You've seen a lot of stuff that looks like that. Maybe not like that, but like that. Like well, in, you, like in that. your work, I have. <laughs> I now realise, but um, I don't associate After Effects with projects like that. I mean, how are you physically making the uh, the elements for it? Uh, yeah, the elements were created in freehand at the time. Or oh, the right. Okay. Time. Yeah. But then a lot of it, like the second half when it kind of goes goes full screen, is really. Yeah. The movement running through a Kaleidoscope plugin, right? Um, which, which work because it works narratively. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I love Kaleidoscopes, <laughs> but I think you know you should only use them if they make some kind of sense. Um, so I try and find films where it can where they make sense. That's that's what I do. 
Um, but, um, but what one problem I, I had with Collision is that it did extremely well in festivals, and um, that was great as a graduation film. It kind of got me out uh, and about, and uh, it kind of set me up, you know, to kind of do more of this kind of work, like left field work that mm. wasn't, you know so commercial but at the same time people kept saying I'll make another one, make another one and I was like I don't want to make another one because it's a concept piece like that's mm. it like another what mm. you know it's it is what it is it is exactly that it's 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 that conflict and, and it's, it's that narrative so I'm not going to make another one I imagine it would have been very easy to sort of go along that course <coughs> um, I don't know I just I just felt like I don't want to be pigeonholed as the mm. guy who makes. I mean, you said it defined me, and that's all I've been doing since. No, I, I, hope, I hope I didn't sound like I was <laughs> suggesting that. Uh, I meant that it was an event point in your career. Mm. But I, I do know that a number of filmmakers do tend to get pigeonholed, and um, it makes them easier to identify. Uh, yeah. And it's you know it's it's laudable that you resisted that. Well, I think there's an element of of recognizability in my work, but then it. It also goes across different different techniques, uh, and again, that will be a nice segue into the next piece, um, uh, uh, which is called Anat, um, which is didn't come straight after Collision, but I'm doing a chronological kind of screening tonight. So this one's from 2008, and um, basically one thing I think I try with each with each work is is uh, to kind of define it. Uh, uh, in terms of uh, kind of limitations I work with it and uh, then try and explore kind of as, as much as I can. And with Anat, basically the limitations were no digital, um, one camera angle, Yeah, I think that's, uh, that's enough. Okay, great. Right. Introduction. Oh, yeah, and it's a music video uh, for a Japanese musician called Gemma Poor. So that's quite a contrary to expectation piece, yet some of the visual motifs are clearly recognisable from work that precedes it. But I have to say, um, were, you, were you able to storyboard that piece in advance? The way it syncs to the music is, is quite uncanny. Um, uh, no, um, that's one of the things I still haven't mastered, storyboarding. Um, and it, again, it kind of comes back, comes, goes back to when I was making music, and I just kind of make things up as, as I was going along. Um, if you work digitally, you know, you, you can do that in non-linear ways. So you go mm. back and forth with, with this kind of work. What I found is that it's such a slow process, so you can, almost, you know, you can kind of think about it as you're doing it. Um, How were you able to re were you able to replay it to see whether it synchronized with the music up to the point you were at? Yeah, yeah. There, I mean, there's like slight, slight tweaks uh, of the timing in there. For example, at the beginning when the sun comes out, to yeah. me, that's kind of tweaked afterwards. Right. Basically, um, I I just tried to work out like how many uh, how many frames to to a bar. Right. And, and then basically did that. So I knew like every whatever 12 frames, you know, I could come up with something like a bigger change or a change of movement. Sure. Um, and then by the end of every day, I'd kind of load it into After Effects, kind of look at the day's work. Yeah. Uh, and decide, you know, how to proceed the next day. It's basically just shot in sequence yeah. over, over three weeks. And if you you know, you, you, you can see like it kind of it, 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 the change between day and night. Like 
it gets dark outside mm. and uh, it gets lightning outside. You can kind of count the days that we're working on it. <laughs> it is, well, I mean, it is clearly made in a single take, or certainly appears to be made in a single take, and I find that's one of the things uh, that's fascinating about it. You have these periodic wipes of the background, but at no point does it sort of start again. There always seems to be continuation. Yeah, I mean, that was obviously one... The, the main idea uh, in it and um, took a little convincing uh, for the record company to, to go with that. So I showed them uh, some, uh, I pitched the idea and they liked it and then I, I kept sending them work in progress and after about a week they said it's not all going to be shot from one camera angle is it? And I said no, no, trust me please. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like yeah, okay whatever. Uh, and yeah, I'm forever grateful that they you know, held, held back. Yeah. Because if it works, then that's why it works. Because yeah. you get that, you know, the space being folded and being changed. And I mean, some of some of the jumps from one frame to the next, we would uh, literally like it was a table like this, and then we basically change everything and put things up and down. And but you, I mean, you see it, but you don't see it because it's kind of seamless, but like some, you know, some of the changes are so extreme from one frame to the next. Yeah. Well, I was certainly seduced by that. Um, it, it seemed kind of effortless in its own mm. momentum. Sorry, it sounds rather pretentious, but um, you know, it, it seemed to be completely have its own kind of organic um, development and evolution. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that was the idea. But I mean, even for me, like I can't understand anymore like what we did exactly. I just remember some of the changes would take like a, one hour, you know, an hour to set up like a new part, mm. where, you know, where it changes over. But then in, in the flow, it just flows. And how many other animators are you working with? Um, it was myself, uh, Noriko Okaku, and then the two assistants. Right. Yeah. So you were able to sort of direct, literally direct. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Just different corners of the table, and it's like, okay, I'm, I'll do this one and that one, and you do this and that. And, you know, can you just do like a horizontal move there? And yeah. You can't do any wiggles. You know, and then, but then people are kind of free to work, work within that. So there's improvisation within yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. yeah. Oh, this. Shall we move on? Uh, if you want, yeah. Yeah. Got quite a few to get through. <laughs> Well, um, we'll have an interval in about 10 minutes' time. How about that? Because I don't want to okay. exhaust you in, in yeah. one go. Okay. What, do you, what are you showing next? Um, well, uh, next, uh, we're going back on a, a, a slightly more political angle uh, with a film called Spin, which actually came out of, out of collision. And what I... What I liked about Collision is, is how it uh, kind of entices you in, into its world and is quite mesmerizing and um, kind of beautiful. But then there's a kind of story that is, maybe isn't so, so beautiful. And I thought it'd be interesting to make a film uh, about that, but using, by looking at war in more general terms rather than a specific conflict and um, also looking at this idea how war is mediated as kind of something beautiful as uh, packaged uh, entertainment. Um, so I looked at um, Busby Barclay's uh, escapist Hollywood uh, films of dance troops and then at military troops uh, of all sorts of colorations from kind of fascist uh, grades to communist to you know just any kind of military formations and uh, using toy soldiers kind of juxtaposing the two into a kind of death spectacle musical and what uh, technique are you using for this um, that's uh, one of the more elaborate ones in the users 2D animation and After Effects, 3D animation in Maya, and um, yeah, say so, great. Do you want something to switch? Okay. Yeah.
let's give it a thumb. Oh, no. okay. Uh, okay, well, let's have a, uh, a ten minute break. Uh, before we do, how do people feel temperature wise? Is it too hot, too cold? Is it okay? Okay. You want? You don't? Okay, um, that one opens. If you want to cross draft this, this one opens, so do what we feel. Okay. Um, right, we'll have a short break. Um, can we have a big round of applause for Matt? to say we have an audience of nearly 50 people tonight, so that is pretty, pretty damn good. <laughs> Matt, we're losing you to Hong Kong. What the hell is going on? Yeah, I, just, I like to go where the action is. Yeah. Yeah. So you fancy rioting and... <laughs> uh, <laughs> try our gangs and... Uh, yeah, well, I've just I've been in London for uh, for way too long, and uh, I thought I could do with a little challenge. And tell us what you're going to be doing in Hong Kong. I'll I'll be uh, I'll be joining the uh, School of Creative Media, which is a department at Hong Kong City University that is run by Jeffrey Shaw, who is a media artist. Mm -hmm. Uh, and he's been getting uh, quite interesting faculty over, uh, so I'll be joining them. It's quite, it's like a mixed bunch. Uh, Jane Prophet, who used to be gold.